Hi everybody, Scott Morrison here, CTO of Layer 7 Technologies. Listen, I'm glad you could join me today. What we're going to be talking about is OpenID Connect, made simple using secure span gateways. Now, OpenID Connect is one of these new technologies that's quite literally emerging as we're speaking. And what we're doing here at Layer 7 is actually working hard to track this and make sure that all of our technology, all of our capabilities within our entire secure span line actually has exactly the tools you need to make it a lot easier to uh, start to harness this new very very exciting new technology. Now here's what's happening and I think what's really interesting. If you look at identity management in the old enterprise it was always very centralized. There was this you know kind of central priesthood who ran the actual uh, directories whether they were LDAP or Active Directory or you know Oracle Access Manager or Tivoli or whatever. Basically it was a central cabal of, of uh, um, you know, IT professionals who worked on that and sort of guarded that access. What's really interesting today in what we're calling the new hybrid enterprise is this movement towards external identities. In other words, people who are outside of the enterprise who come and go and they have very loosely connected relationships. And this really requires a very different approach. In other words, if you try to centralize things again with, you know, that one central group that wants, you know, forms filled out in triplicate every time somebody actually has to go into the LDAP directory, you're never going to be able to scale effectively. You're never going to be able to make use of this, you know, new agile approach to, um, you know, web development that we're seeing outside. So what's really Really important now is to start to you know kind of look at the new emerging technologies that are coming out of the API world and figure out how we can use them and how we can use them really effectively to get the best of both worlds. In other words, the sort of security and reliability that uh, we expect out of the the classic enterprise, but also the agility that we're seeing out there on the internet today with um, all sorts of new developments in the API economy. So that's what we're going to talk about today, and that's what our main focus is going to be. Now the first thing we've got to think about, especially as we start to move into something like OpenID Connect, is the foundation of it is really OAuth. And we've been doing a lot of work over the last few years in supporting OAuth within, you know, the whole Layer 7 foundation. And we've tried to make it as easy as possible because one of the things that our customers worry about all the time is how they can actually take a new technology like OAuth and be able to scale it across a number of different systems and just make it easy to do. The big problem that our customers face is first of all make it easy you know because basically there's a couple of different versions of OAuth out there there's a lot of interoperability issues and quite frankly it actually isn't that easy there's a lot of interesting nuances especially in 1.0a that become a little difficult to manage so one of the things that we put into secure span right away was the ability essentially within the gateways to deploy either as an authorization server or a protected resource server and any one of the gateways can play either of these two roles and Basically, we've tried to make it as easy as possible so an administrator can quite literally drag and drop OAuth capabilities onto any existing API. And that's a really, really powerful thing. And furthermore, the actual authorization can hook into just about any directory. So if you do happen to have identities that are existing in, let's say, an LDAP directory or Active Directory or something like that, you actually can make use of that. You can leverage your existing investment. And furthermore, if you're starting to move out you know, into a much more kind of agile social networking approach to identity the foundations are also there so you can start to leverage that as well especially as you be begin to deploy some of the other technologies that we're offering such as the API portal so the next big thing that you have to worry about of course is making OAuth scale because again if we're moving towards this idea of trying to use technologies like OpenID Connect and I'll tell you more about that in a minute your foundation has to be really strong so the other big piece that we've put into this that I think is really, really important is the ability to split the tiers out individually in, um, in any kind of OAuth and OpenID Connect deployment and be able to scale these individually for every one of the particular kinds of uh, accesses that you're going to need. Great example is the authorization server is not going to be hit nearly as much as the resource servers. So the resource servers have to scale independently and, and very, very effectively, up to tens of thousands of transactions a second. That's actually what's being demanded by a lot of our customers now. And so we've come up with a multi-tier architecture here so that basically you can put the resources where you need the resources and balance them based on your usage profiles. And it turns out everybody's are going to be different. Furthermore, we've allowed a separation to occur between the token store and the actual enforcement points. So the tokens, which are really the keys to the kingdom, uh, whether they're access tokens or refresh tokens, can be kept 
out of the way of something like the DMZ. So in other words, they're not out there in the cloud where if for some reason somebody cracks that um, token store and actually gets access to those tokens, you don't lose everything. So they can be kept in a very, very secure location and basically locked down so that only the resource servers that are actually allowed to you know, validate tokens can actually do that. And furthermore, only the authorization servers, which are actually accessing and creating tokens, can actually issue those tokens and put them into that secure token store. Very, very important as you get into real mission critical OAuth deployments. So here's what we're actually doing with OpenID Connect. Because remember, OpenID Connect is an emerging technology really for actually getting access to additional attributes and things. So I always think of it as, as sort of, you know, the logical extension of something like, you know, the old SAML attribute assertions, which we see a lot of use for in things like ABAC, which is attribute-based access control. In other words, access control based not necessarily on who I am, but what my characteristics are, such as my title or my pay grade or something like that. Very, very important in a lot of domains. OpenID Connect is similar to that, similar to the idea of attribute assertions in that it gives a formalized approach to actually getting access to those critical attributes. Uh, the difference is, of course, it's not all munged together into you know, one particular token, but instead you know, really follows the very modern and agile approach to actually getting access to information by using RESTful APIs. It defines a couple of new endpoints. Uh, some are optional, but a few of them are really core. You know, check ID and user info are two of the ones that I'm going to actually demonstrate for you right now, and uh, and they're they're actually becoming the sort of the foundation of this whole thing. So this whole th whole scheme really runs on top of OAuth. So you can't do any of it unless you've already got a strong OAuth foundation, which is why I really opened up with uh, some talks about that. But enough slideware here. You've seen all that kind of stuff, and you know anybody can build slides. What I'm going to do instead is actually show you a live demonstration. So what this is showing you right here is a very, very simple example of, you know, basically our, our uh, web page that gives you that, that initial contact into, um, you know, the OAuth and OpenID Connect system. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to demonstrate, um, you know, basically some simple access that's giving me a, um, access to attributes, um, you know, associated with my account. And in this case, I'm going to go in, you know, using a simple admin account. The pages here are really just you know, a client that's there to kind of show you what information is being exchanged back and forth. It's using the secure span gateways. It's actually being served up by the secure span gateways, um, but it's also using the core OAuth and OpenID Connect capabilities on those gateways, the stuff that just comes right out of the box. So initially what I'm going to do is, is start a new OAuth handshake. So I'm going to go out here and I'm going to hit this particular endpoint, which is internal into our network right now. And in particular, I'm going to hit the basically OAuth endpoint right here and do an initial authorization. So let's do that first of all. And what it's going to take me through is the, the classic OAuth authorization dance. So it's going to um, actually ask me what I'm going to do and, and what I'm willing to authorize. So let me log in here really quickly. And first of all, I'll come in as the admin account. And so now I'm authorized into the service. And it's going to now ask me what I want to authorize. So in other words, I'm getting control over what I'm authorizing. And that's really important because think about that. That's a, that's a fundamental difference between the old world approach where basically you'd have to go to one of the priesthood of the LDAP directories and say, this is, you know, please, sir, can you authorize me for this? To the whole social networking approach where I own my information and I have an account somewhere and I'm going to authorize access to another client. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I've come in as the admin account, okay, and now the admin I'm, is going to authorize access to certain attributes. So in this case my basic profile, which includes my user ID and my name, um, I'm going to actually basically um, give access to everything, my phone number, my email, and my address. So I'm going to do this grant. So this is a classic OAuth thing. I have basically created a grant and said I'm going to allow access not just to you know a site, but I'm going to allow access to a certain um, um, class of information. So I'm defining in a sense a scope right here. So now I'm back onto my client page right now and what I can do is either initiate a new um, OAuth handshake, refresh the access um, token, um, uh, you know, with the refresh token I've got. I'm not going to do that stuff right now. What I'm going to do instead is, 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 first of all, point out a couple of things. I've got an access token, a refresh token, obviously. Here's the JSON structure that it all came in right here. 
uh, uh, which, you know, which is all basically within the context now of, uh, of my web browser. Um, and I can use that stuff to actually access a particular um, resource. So I'm going to access this thing, resource foo, which is just a very, very simple API that requires OAuth access. So what I'm going to do first of all is just check the integrity of the entire uh, call and that and make sure that I've got a reasonable you know, OAuth uh, relationship set up. Make sure the dance worked appropriately. So I'm going to call that API and down here um, I basically got a display which shows what's coming back. And, and really what I'm, what that that resource foo is doing is just echoing back a little information about you know me as a um, my OAuth session and that um, so this is just a bit of a sanity check but it's very similar to how I would protect essentially any API you know whether it's access to um, you know some kind of database or um, you know any kind of service that I might be making available it's being protected by the same kind of technology on a secure span gateway so enough of that we know the OAuth parts working fine and we also know that I've gone through and, and created some claims in such a way that I can actually get access to OpenID Connect endpoints and these are the two of them the first one I'm gonna talk about is check ID now this is an interesting one because it's a little controversial right now it's fairly recently been deprecated and we've been tracking that on quite literally a day-to-day -day basis and making tweaks to our implementation to make sure that it's exactly tracking what's being published this is the world that we live in now and uh, and of course things move very fast and you're only as good as how how you know I would say agile your infrastructure is so check ID of course has been recently deprecated but the thing is, is that there's still value in there because really check ID is essentially how you validate the content of a signed JWT or a JWT token and um, and in this case what I'm going to do is is I'm actually going to exercise it because it is implemented there and um, what I've done is I've I've essentially sent in my token and got back a whole bunch of validation information about that particular token the user ID the nonce everything like that so that thing is working that thing is there but the real value here is trying to get attributes because remember what I did in this whole thing is that I, I signed on I authorized access to the attribute endpoint and in particular I went through and I granted access I authorized access to a number of different attributes I didn't have to choose them all in this case I did and that's what user info is going to give us access to so there's now a user info at um, endpoint right here that I can query again you know using my access token and get access to um, um, from my client to other attributes that might be stored in my LDAP directory or whatever other directory I'm in, um, integrating with so let's try that let's try call user info right now boom what I get back is I'm the admin my name is Darth or <laughs> my family name is Vader and of course my nickname is master of the dark force uh, I've got the email address because I authorized access to this and my phone number it's funny Darth Vader has a 555 area code and I'm somewhere out in space and I actually have no country I have an empire instead now interestingly enough Darth Vader is actually at deathstar.org I wonder if by the third movie he actually had to uh, change that to Death Star 2 or something like that and I don't actually count the first three movies by the way or what they, they call those first three movies but that's another uh, um, a, a sideline so what's important here what's really important is that what we've done is is we've authorized access to this user info um, um, endpoint to a particular client application and that's the one you see running right here and this is the basis really of being able to share information share attributes between different apps and of course it's all done through API's it's all done on the foundation of OAuth and what we've tried to do with our toolkit here that we put together is give people exactly the capabilities they need so they can drag and drop in OAuth capabilities on any APIs but also make the OpenID Connect foundations there so that they can begin to mine their LDAP directories now don't get scared by the toolkit idea because actually that's a good thing it's as simple as you could possibly imagine where quite literally you just drop in a few components but the toolkit part of it comes into effect when you actually need to drill down to deal with unusual situations let's say you've got a very very particular backend directory or even a database that you want to interface with that's where things really shine where you can start to go in and make changes to uh, you know deal with unusual situations so that's basically what I wanted to show you all the pieces are there they're ready to go now this is layer 7's OAuth capabilities with OpenID Connect I'm Scott Morrison, the CTO of Layer 7. Thanks a lot for joining me today.